Hello, I'm Ralph from Supermetrics, and today I'd like to show you how to use TellMe. TellMe is a powerful chart for Looker Studio that allows you to create data-driven sentences. This chart uses a macro language, making it very flexible, but a little harder to configure. In this tutorial, I walk you through the basic steps to reproduce the samples found in the demo report. In this report, you'll find everything to need to know about this chart. How to configure metrics and dimensions, how to use the macro language, what style options are available, and finally, some examples for your inspiration. In this video, we'll concentrate on the five examples in the macro section. In this first example, I'll show you how to access the different metrics and dimension values. We start with a simple table showing sessions per country, then we place the Tell Me chart on the canvas. By default, the chart will render a table with one row and one column. We can now add the dimension country. Like the table on the left, Tell Me will render five lines. Next, let's configure the comparison date range. This will add the values from the previous session to the table. In the Style tab, we'll make two adjustments. Change the template from table to table with delta values and increase the number of rows. The result is the same as in the table on the left, but we can also see the absolute number of sessions and the absolute delta values, something that's not available in native tables. Let's start writing our custom macros. By default, the template area will show the label and the value of the first column in the first row. I'll explain how these macros work in just a minute. You can now go ahead and change the text of the template text. This field also accepts HTML tags, such as line breaks. We can now simply copy the second macro and replace metrics.0 with dimension to print the name of the first country in the chart. Here we go, you have just created your first custom macro. I will now simply paste the macro text from the example into our chart and do some quick updates. As you can see, we can even use emojis in our text. In the next section, I'll explain these different macro expressions. In the demo report, navigate to the page Macro Language Reference. This page lists all macros available for this chart. Label, value, delta, date range, list, table, and finally card label. These macros aren't as complicated as they look like. Each macro has two parts, the macro name and one or two parameters. For example, the macro label, which simply returns the field's label, requires one parameter, the field name. The field name can be dimension, metric, or target. Because there can be more than one metric or target, we need to specify which metric we mean. This is why we have to write metric.0 if we mean the first metric or metric.1 if we want to print the label name of the second metric. The macro value requires two parameters, the field name but also the aggregation or the row number. If you don't use the dimension breakdown like in our first example, you can simply use zero for the second parameter as there is only one row in the data set. But if you use the dimension breakdown, you likely want to aggregate the data. Your options are sum, mean, median, min, and max. As we have shed some light on how the macros work, the next two examples will be easier to understand. But first, I'd like to show you how you can create multiple lists using small multiples and a pre-configured template. I'll move the dimension country into the field for small multiples and use the dimension city for the dimension breakdown. This will immediately create two cards with a list. By changing the size of the canvas, I can control how the cards are rendered. With the style settings, I can then adjust the cards as I wish, the number of list items shown, background color, rounded corners or padding. Everything can be easily adapted. You can also precisely control how your cards are organized. I'll copy-paste the code from the demo guide to recreate the list with a custom template. You'll notice that the result is slightly different. We must insert some CSS in the style panel to properly align the metrics to the right and create the dotted line. There are other options for styling lists with CSS. 
but this is out of the scope of this tutorial. Let's have a look at the macro code of this example. You probably noticed that there is something different. The macro code is nested. Two parts are required, the definition of the list and the definition of each list item. The macro list item requires two parameters. The first parameter, the type of item, can be value, label, or delta. The second parameter must be the field definition, for example, dimension. In the last section of this tutorial, we'll look into conditional statements. They allow you to create dynamic messages based on your data. Are sessions up or down compared to the previous date range? We can use if statements in combination with a delta macro to find out. The example from the demo report uses three different if statements to check if the delta between the first metric and the compare metric is bigger, smaller, or equal. We can then place the message we want to appear within the if statements. To test our script, we can filter the data with the help of a table. The message will change depending on the selected row. In some cases, a similar result can be achieved using a calculated field. In this example, we use a data set that contains a metric for sessions and targets. Depending on the delta between metric and target values, the calculation will return the words up or down with an emoji. The template text is much easier to read as it simply returns the value of the calculated field. We can now use the table as a filter to change the message of our chart. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please find the link to the demo report in the description of the video. Happy reporting.